Our theme this month is abundance. And our topic today is acknowledging the good that is everywhere present. The good that is everywhere present. Spiritual traditions will tell you, don't judge by the appearances. That it's maya, that it is illusion, that there is something beyond what it is that you see with your natural eyesight. And even when we're seeing things with our natural eyesight, we don't always necessarily know what it is that we're actually seeing. Because our brains are wired to interpret everything that we see through the lens of what it is that we already know. We're not getting it. I sprung my back a couple of days ago, and I'm just now being able to kind of be up right again. But I was literally like hunched over like this. And I was remembering of how judgmental I had been in my youth of elder people who were hunched over, taking a long time to cross the street, and being very impatient with that, and realizing I didn't know what I was seeing. I didn't realize I was seeing somebody in pain, that every step that they were taking was pain. And they weren't moving slowly. They were doing the best that they could with all of that pain. And as annoyed as I might have been that they were being slow, they were more terrified of me and the rest of us as drivers and the fear of our impatience, and were they in danger from us? Let, let, let that sink in for a moment. There's youthful, cocky me in my car that just sees some old person, you know, why are you even bothering to, you know, cross the street now? You're just going to hold everybody up. You're just like, you know, get, you know getting in the way. You're, you're upsetting my plans. You're going to throw me off by 15 seconds. Not knowing what I'm looking at is pain. This person's in pain with every step and doing the best that they absolutely can do. And more afraid of me than I am of them. With every reason to be because I was in more of a position to hurt them, and the worst that they were doing is just giving me a little inconvenience. You know, we're at an interesting time right now. We're deep off into the COVID pandemic here in the United States, and literally only God knows where that's going with our lack of preventative much of anything now. <laughs> and I say thank you to everybody who's made these hard, hard sacrifices to stay away from your jobs, to stay away from each other, to shelter in place. I say thank you to all of the people who've been the quote-unquote essential workers who in the midst of all this have had to go to work. To all the kids who haven't been able to go to school and to intermingle with their, with their classmates. 
for all of the parents who've had to homeschool their kids. And I could go on and on and on for the people who are unemployed, for the upheaval that's happened right now. The utmost capacity, empathy and compassion for the people who've lost their lives, for the ones who are struggling with illness, for the ones who just don't know and are living in such uncertainty. We're in this together. We may not be having the exact same experience, but there is something going on, and it's really, really big. And this may sound like it's coming out from left field, but why waste a good crisis? Why waste a good crisis? The universe has gone way out of the way to create this kind of a moment and this kind of a circumstance where we're so disrupted. There's a book that I've been reading for a number of months now by Dr. Joe Dispenza called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And as much anxiousness and anxiety there is to want to get on with it and to get back to work and to you know, get back to the sporting events and back to the bars and the clubs and the movies and the concerts and all of the rest of that. Every state's got its own timing and all of the rest of that. But regardless of what it is that you're trying to do, don't go back. Please don't go back. What a waste it would be to have this much disruption to simply go back and recreate where we were before. I remember a friend of mine, this was years ago, and with one of the earthquakes that we had in California, lived in San Francisco, and the books fell off his shelf in the library. And he said, as he was looking at the books on the floor, he thought to himself, hmm, he'd been wanting to reorganize those books for a long time. <laughs> and now that they're all on the floor, he has an opportunity to put it back together again in a different way. Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall. And all the king's horses and all the king's men cannot put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Wherever we go from here, it's new. Wherever we go from here, it's forward. And if we see with our mind's eye, if we're willing to take a look at the magnificence of everything that's going on, we'll start to see good everywhere. There'll start to be blessings everywhere. With this elevated consciousness, now when I see that elderly person crossing that street, my heart is open. My heart is open. Now what I see is courage. Now what I see is gratitude that they can get across the street. And what a testament that is of their capacity, even in the midst of all of that pain, to keep going. Now when I see that, I see inspiration. Now when I see that, I see possibility. Now when I see that, I, I see myself cheering. Come on, you can do it. Come on, you can get across. And looking to the left and the right, looking at the other drivers, trying to get their attention, 
in case they don't see him. Do, do, do you see that person? Do you, do, do you want to make sure that they don't get hurt? We've got a moment now. Even as we're standing here, even as I'm speaking to you, all across this nation, the cities are burning. I don't even know how many now. Last night, there were 30. At least 30. Just breathe that in for a moment. We knew there was going to be a lot of pent-up energy anyway, with people having been separated from their outlets, separated from their normal ways of letting off steam, separated from the ways in which they get inspired and nurtured, the gyms being closed and not being able to do the athletics and out on the fields. And I mean, I can go on and on for all the different reasons why we already knew that people locked up and sequestered like that, when they get out, mm, I don't know. I don't know. But when we keep having all of these instances where we can see not just the violence, but the betrayal up close and personal. And the cities that are burning now, the catalyst, the killing of George Floyd, it's just the catalyst. It's not the beginning. It's more like the straw that broke the camel's back like that one last thing. Is it new? No. Stuff isn't new. What's new is that we've got cell phones with cameras up close and personal where we can see it. What's new is that the perpetrators aren't wearing hoods and doing this stuff in the dark of night somewhere. What's new is that it's happening in broad daylight. <laughs> Just jogging down the street or whatever. It's like, that's what's new. What's, what's new is this emboldened sense of lack of accountability that I could stand there on the, midst the crowds in Fifth Avenue, shoot anybody and get away with it. That's what's new. That's what's new. But you know what? You cannot heal what you do not feel. So the last song that Antonita did was a song of India R.E. I don't know her personally, but I was so honored and moved that during her last tour, she gave me a shout out where she was giving tribute to different people who had inspired her music. And back behind her in the backdrop was Feel, Deal, Heal, Reverend Deborah L. Johnson. Feel, Deal, Heal. And I can only assume that she probably has been reading one of my books, The Sacred Yes, where that's a primary theme out of it. Feel, Deal, and heal. So this abundance, this goodness that I see, what I see is this moment that's happening where we're feeling enough to actually start dealing with something. That we're feeling enough to get out of denial about what's happening. That there's this possibility that's happening now See, it looks like we're looking at just rage and anger. 
But don't just judge by the appearances. Don't just judge by the appearances. A lot of what we're looking at is grief. It's grief. And they're not just grieving the loss of one person. And grief isn't even just about grieving what we no longer have. What I've really learned working 20 years with men in prison is that we grieve the most what we didn't have. Listen to what I'm saying. We grieve the most what we didn't have. When that couple is splitting up in that divorce, that pain that goes on for years isn't even so much about all of the stuff about the marriage that they didn't like, the marriage that they don't even want to be in anymore, but it's the dream. It's the dream of all what it could have been. The dream's the last thing to go. That the, the, the rage and the stuff that we're seeing now, it isn't just the pissacity about all of the violence that has been perpetuated against folks. It's the dream that people are grieving. Where's the justice? They're grieving the promise of protection. They're grieving the promise of equality. They're, they're, they're grieving the promise that their life matters. And I find it so interesting that so many people hear black lives matter. Nobody said that. It's black lives matter. <laughs> they're not the only lives that matter, but their lives matter, not Black lives and only black lives matter. But black lives matter. That black lives matter. And this is not to say anything against anybody, but there is an original sin of this nation that is still with us today. And what this goodness everywhere is about is that we have an opportunity here our attention and our focus has to be not just on justice or uplifting the soul or, or up, uplifting the plight of the oppressed. It's got to be a little bit more than that. Part of what it, I admired so much about Martin Luther King Jr. is that he made it very plain that he was struggling and fighting for the soul of America. And when he talked about his own life, he said, everybody wants to live long. Of course, everybody wants to live long. But these words were so prophetic. He said, but if my physical death could keep my children and my white brothers and sisters from a permanent psychological death, then I can think of no act that would be more redemptive. That if my death would save my children and my white brothers and sisters. See, everything, as Marianne Williamson puts it, and from the, the um, Course in Miracles, it's either a call of love or a call for fear. Everything's a call. And I look at everything, personally, as a call for love. Well, we have to deal with what, what is that? What is that in the soul of a person? How lost can a person be? to have your neck, the knee on somebody's neck who's pleading for their life with other people around trying to convince you. Keeping your knee there two and a half minutes after your fellow officers have checked the pulse and said the man's dead and you still don't get off. What is that? Whatever that is, that needs to be healed. 
Whatever that is, is not the act of one man. But in a collective consciousness, we have this running rampant in our politics. We have it running rampant in our politics. We're all over the place. People are saying, I can't breathe. I can't breathe, whatever it is. I can't get the medical care. I, I, I can't get the housing. I can't get the schooling. I can't get the jobs. I can't get this. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And the knee is still on the neck. What is that? And whatever that is, we got to pray for it. Judgment begets judgment. Yes, we want justice, but nobody is outside of the pale. So all of those officers in Milwaukee, they are all children of God. They are all children of God, no less than George Floyd, they're all children of God. But here's what happens here. Our acts are not a measure of our goodness or our badness. They are a measure of our ignorance. And this is the problem with oppression. This is the problem with supremacy. It isn't just how it impacts the marginalized people, but how it steals the soul of the oppressor. That's the problem with it. It's the way that it numbs in its sense of power and privilege and supremacy. The way that it dehumanizes not just the discriminated against, but it dehumanizes the supremacist. And baby has got to go. It's just got to go. And the abundance that I'm seeing now everywhere present is a rising demand for it to go. And what do you really want? Do you want to blow off steam or do you want change? What do you want? What do you want? If I'm married to you and I'm pissed off because I don't think you're doing your fair share of the caregiving of the kids or at home or whatnot, and you come home and I burned up your stuff, I may get revenge. But I bet you're not caring for the kids or any of the things that I say that I want. The consciousness that obtains sustains. If we want equality and justice and fairness, we have to go about obtaining it with equality, justice, and fairness. Now, I'm not saying that you got to sit down and do nothing. When we look at the brave civil rights leaders, they've stood up, they've protested, they've demonstrated. I'm not saying don't take to the streets. All I'm saying is King reminded us that when I begin to hate, I stoop so low as to become the thing that I'm hating. No. That's not the way. And quiet is kept. We don't really know who's writing. Some of this is, yes, the pain that's come out from the black community and that's spilled up. But a lot of this other stuff, I don't know who it is. I'm just saying. <laughs> and I may be going out on a limb, but it smells a whole lot like Russia. It smells a whole lot like the stuff that happened in 2016. And as a black person, I don't want my community taking the rap for it. But whoever is burning down the police stations, whoever is storming the White House, whoever is burning CNN, 
that ain't black people upset. Even the governors are starting to say now that a large percentage of these people protesting are from outside, from where I don't know. But let's not be gullible. Keep your eye on the prize. Don't make the judgment by the appearance. Don't watch the people burning things up in flames and be the way that I was with the, with, 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 with the elderly person crossing the street. Don't miss the pain. Don't miss the fact that people are doing the best that they can to try to get across the street and are more afraid of being hit by you than the inconvenience that the struggle through their pain may be causing you. If we dare to seize this moment, if we dare to embrace our common humanity, we can make a quantum leap. I'm talking about a Star Trek wormhole that's happening right now, catapulted to new dimensions. If we can stand together, love each other, Pray for each other and leave no one behind. No one. Will you pray for these police officers, not just about them? Every soul, every soul is redeemable. Do we need justice yet? but they can turn around in prison. I'm just saying. Even if they go to prison, there can still be a turnaround. What do you want? Do you want the oneness? If you want the oneness, nobody can be outside of it. Do you want the empathy? Do you want the compassion? Is, is that what you want to stand for? Then just stand for it indiscriminately and like the sun, make your light to shine on the just and the unjust. Let us pray. In this moment right now, we open up wide to possibilities. In this moment right now, we, we, we dare to see. In this moment right now, we dare to remember. In this moment right now, we dare to stand in our spiritual power and stand before the storms and declare peace, be still. Shh, peace be still. Peace. Be still. Can you come here, Etienne? This is all I'm hearing right now. Can you get a mic? Hush. Hush. Somebody's calling my name. Hush. 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 Somebody's calling my name. Hush. Hush. Somebody's, Somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, my Lord. Oh. What shall I do? 
shall I do? I said it sound, sound like a freedom. Freedom. Freedom is calling, calling my, my name. name. It sounds sound like a freedom. Freedom. Freedom is calling, calling my, my name. name. Sound. sound. Like a freedom, freedom, freedom is calling my name. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do? What shall I do? I said a hush, hush, yeah. hush. hush yeah. Cause somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush. Hush. Hush! Somebody's, Somebody's calling, calling my name. name. Hush! Hush! Yeah. Hush! Hush! Yeah. Somebody's calling, calling my name. name. Oh my Lord! Oh my, oh Lord. my Lord! What shall I do? Shall I do? I said it sounds, sounds like, like a freedom, like freedom, and freedom is calling, calling my name. name. Yeah. I said it sounds, sounds like, like a freedom, freedom, freedom is calling, calling my, my name. name. Sounds, sounds like, like a freedom. Freedom, freedom is calling, calling my name. name. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall we do? What shall we do? Breathe that in. Mm. You got to say to the stuff of this world, hush. Because something is calling you, calling you up higher than you've ever been. Listen. Listen. 